Well, we're back at it once again. Barry Funkhauser here, host of the Barry Funkhauser Show, alongside my trusty cohort, Joe. Joe, you're kind oh, of I'm a cohort. I'm not a co-host. I'm a core. I'm a cohort. Oh, did I spell Wait, that what wrong? What's that all about? No, I think you got it right. I mean, you can say that either thing. I just thought I was co-host sounds so much better. The cohort sounds like we're about to like rob a bank. Do you want to rob a bank, Barry? Is that what we're going for? No, no, I'm just uh, akinning us to, you know, big teams like on television, you know, Wheel of Fortune, Pat Sajak and Vanna White. You're kind of. Oh, I totally want to be Vanna White. Yeah, you can be (laughs) Pat Sajak all day long. I want to be Vanna White. Vanna White's way cooler than Pat. Well, he is retiring and they just. I'm really sad. I'm really sad. Well, hey. The host, they announced the replacement, Joe. Oh, they did? Is it Ryan Seacrest? Ding, 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 ding. Hey, hey, hey. our good buddy Ryan Seacrest. Don't let Ryan Seacrest tell you that he's any taller than 5'4 because he's not. He's a really nice guy, though. We like Ryan Seacrest. I just like to give him hell about that. He's just got to be able to see see a letter and say a letter and add. Yeah, but see, I'm really really hoping. you know, Pat's daughter has been doing the social media stuff and the lifestyle stuff. Is she going to be the new Vanna? Do, do they keep her on as the lifestyle correspondent? I hope so, because she's been doing a fantastic job. Well, Vanna did say that years ago she would retire when Pat retired. But Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to they're gonna retire, then they're going to be consultants. But I'm just hoping, you know, I like Vanna. I, I, I want Vanna to come on the radio station. I want her to... To flip some songs for us and stuff. She's well, awesome. it's going to turn super smart, by the way. Have you? Did you know that? I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's like super smart. <laughs> uh, so aside from everyone's uh, world in America being turned upside down from this news that uh, your 730 will change every night. I know. So, so sad. Let's turn our worlds upside down. And travel to New Zealand and meet oh. another singer-songwriter here on the show. So bad. Welcome to the program, Jamie McDell. Hey! hey hello. <laughs> Thank you All so right, now, much. <laughs> now I can ask my question. Jamie, are you currently in the United States with us, or are you at home in the New Zealand? Or are you in Canada? <laughs> Good question. I'm actually in Nashville, Tennessee at the moment. Mm-hmm. So not calling all the way from New Zealand, but I would have either way. <laughs> so, Do you have Wheel of Fortune over there in New Zealand? Did you grow up to some type of show like that? It's like a dinner time game show on TV. Um, where you spin a wheel. <laughs> I, I don't remember having anything like that. Yeah, there's some sort of fascination with a colored <laughs> wheel spinning and pew, somebody going bankrupt. So... <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I can't say I remember that. No, (laughs) not in New Zealand. You have been working on music for a long time. What did I read? 16 years? Well, actually, you got signed when you were 16 years old. Is that right? That is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have. I I feel like I've been around the block. That's for sure. (laughs) There's a whole lot of content out there on YouTube, et cetera, of me from, from, yeah, 15, 16 years old. So I definitely battle with whether I should remove it. (laughs) <laughs> but it's out there for now. Well, how did that all oh come God. about? Gonna... <laughs> yeah. Um, I honestly, I just started songwriting when I was sort of 12 or 13 and just did it all the time. And um, my parents sort of brought up the idea of recording a demo tape, which I know is very old school now. Um, but we, yeah, we just did the, the classic dream story, we sent a tape into a record label in New Zealand, of course, being a very small industry, um, they were able to hear it and sort of brought me in for a meeting and signed me after that. So, yeah. All right. So so basically, <laughs> if you are a 12 year old in New Zealand and you're a female, just start writing songs and you can be like Jamie and Lord because exactly. that's just what that's happens. It's, it's just the New Zealand way. <laughs> Very straightforward. Yeah, no, so I just kind of got involved in the industry and I suppose I have looked back, but I'll say, yeah, (laughs) I haven't looked back since. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, so when did you move to the States? It looks like you moved to Canada first, and I understand. (laughs) When did you... uh... (laughs) When did you go from there to here? What's it? What is your travel situation? And what at what point did you go? Okay, I got to get off this island and go. Yeah, 
That's a good you, you've seen she's seen all of the Lord of the Rings sets already. She's already been to Hobbiton like a a, a billion times. So she yeah, Absolutely. she needs to get off My that island. My husband yeah. comes from the area in which Hobbiton is based, so I've seen it all. Oh, was he um, in the movies? Oh, was no, he an extra? Because everybody was an extra. Not, I know. Oh, come on! He was like the one person <laughs> in New the Zealand only person, who wasn't yeah. an extra. I know, and me as well. Um, no, I. I actually well, you were busy of, writing songs, you know. Exactly. It's, it's, and when I started out as a as a teen in New Zealand, I was sort of releasing a lot of I would call it like pop country stuff, just as the genre of country and folk isn't isn't so big for us. Um, but I'd grown up listening to a lot of country music and that was kind of sparked what sparked the idea of moving to North America so I could, I don't know, be around people that got my Emmy Lou Harris and John Denver oh, references. So you're talking like good old country, like the Willie Nelsons and the Chris Christophersons yeah, of the world. That, okay, that, gotcha. That sounds. So I was really trying to figure out where I could kind of go and access that and learn from that. Um, and, and you're I'll like, honest, <laughs> and you were like Toronto. That's that's where country music I know. lives. <laughs> I'll be, I was going to say, I'll be honest with you. US, of course, would would have been a great idea, um, but it's not as easy to get a visa. <laughs> Right, right. as it is as part of the Commonwealth um, in Canada. So we decided we'd kind of just move to what I literally looked on the map and saw that Toronto was reasonably close to Nashville. <laughs> so that'd be a good place to start. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because people don't realize how far south Toronto actually goes. There's a lot of places in the U.S. that are actually way further north than Toronto is. Because it yeah, like, dips yeah. way down in there, like right by Detroit, so... And, and up, up until this point, I'd been traveling back and forth to Nashville from New Zealand, right? So anywhere, oh. <laughs> anywhere oh, closer than that was, was great for me. So that's, that's a, that's what, a, what 22 mood. hours one way? <laughs> I think it's actually 13 hours. So you can definitely fit in the Lord of the Rings oh, okay. trilogy. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, hey, yeah. Yeah, that's the important <laughs> thing, you know? <laughs> okay. So what, when did you actually, uh, when were you guys able to make it down, um, did, did you cross the border illegally from wait Canada hold on hold on States? hold on hold on hold on <laughs> oh, come on i have a question I, before you move on all right all i'll right, try to right. jam in a question here because i'm gonna i'm gonna stand up for canada here because <laughs> i'm trying to think of oh, canada gordon Here's, what are you trying to think of <laughs> oh, <man>, native land <laughs> i could sing the whole song if you want no i'm not going to go go ahead barry no, so Canada has a lot of country artists. Here's who I'm thinking of. Like Carly Pierce is from Canada. You'd oh, be yep. surprised how... Uh, Shania Twain. That's right. A lot of Canadian country, a lot of country music that people think are from the States come from the great white north. It's surprising. Wow. Yeah, honestly, it was it, it just kind of, A, it was closer to Nashville, but yeah, B, just that history of of country folk music um that's that was the draw um but no we didn't come into the u.s illegally <laughs> <laughs> i didn't think you did just i was to just clear being that funny. Up for the u.s <laughs> customs that may be listening <laughs> no 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 we kind of would just come in and out for a couple of weeks at a time really so that that ended up working out fine <laughs> nice that's great yeah. um so then so you have a you're not a, like a citizen. You're you got your passport, so you got to show that where you go, right? I'm sure people assume that you're not a citizen because of your accent and whatnot. But oh uh, yeah, people look at you funny when you're playing country music, and then you're like, all right, so this next. <laughs> oh no, yeah, the I, accent really gets you. I'm sort of ashamed of it actually because the oh, accent be. when I sing is so like it's even I don't know a, a little southern. Um, but I can kind of only credit it to the fact that, you know, I was listening to artists from Texas and Nashville and Kentucky and all of that when I was a child. So the way I learned to sing was with that accent. And I think it's only just in the last probably five years that I think Kiwi artists have started to embrace our accent a little more. But it, it is quite hard work, <laughs> especially translating it to something that's yeah country or Americana. Well, I think a lot of I think a lot of artists do that. Unless you're Morris, yeah. who who was able to keep his British accent while singing, most people from other countries when they're singing in English, it becomes like the the Hollywood English, 
you know? Yeah. So it's like, it all sounds kind of American at that point. And then, you totally. know, people break off and they're like, yes, I'm from South Africa. And you're like, whoa, whoa, where did that <laughs> accent come from? Like, oh man. Yeah, no, no, but embrace it. Like me, yeah. me. everybody's got an accent. Like I have yeah. the prototypical Southern California surfer Valley girl accent. That is what mm -hmm. I got. And I rock it <laughs> because you got it. You just got to be, you got to be happy with who you are. So yeah, enjoy your yeah. accent. Let it come through. Let it, let it sing on. I, I will country roads. <laughs> take me home. Yeah. I'll give it a exactly. go. <laughs> give it to me. Yeah. I can sing that one with you too. <laughs> so you've been, uh, so, so you are, are getting around into the States and into, oh, excuse me, into Canada and yep. You're, you're cruising around, you're meeting some people. What's what's the response been? You know, people are listening to you sing, and like you said, then you come on and you say like, hi, your new, your new Zealand accent. Are people like, is the first question always, where are you from? Yeah, I think yeah. it's been really interesting actually how the audience has sort of responded to me because I think it, it's sort of twofold. My humor and the humor in New Zealand is quite dry and sarcastic. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that always translates yeah, yeah, <laughs> in my shows. <laughs> People kind of tend to take you quite seriously. Um, and then I think it's just been interesting. I think some of my songs, I suppose, have a, a few controversial elements in terms of feminism and um, I suppose a, a more kind of progressive story. Oh, that, that's I, not controversial here. We're all about that. So yeah, ahead. I know on your side for sure. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, I mean, same thing in New Zealand. I think there's small towns in New Zealand that kind of can take that on board or not, or, or don't really understand what you're getting at. So it's been a bit of a mix. Um, I'd like to say, yeah, in general, people seem to kind of laugh at my jokes and um, <laughs> like me, probably just because I'm from another country. Um, but yeah, no, it's been, I've had a good response so far. <laughs> think, well, you got, you got like a Casey Musgraves vibe going on, you know, cause she's like progressive and she talks about that stuff in her songs too. Yeah, and no, I appreciate she's got it. a dry, witty, you know, wry sense of humor. We just need to get you guys connected. So she brings you on tour. That would be amazing. But I mean, exactly. I think people are really craving a new perspective, especially in country music as well. So yeah, I think it goes down well just to kind of share something unique that maybe, yeah, hasn't been done before. So that's well, that what keeps the, it keeps the genre do. fresh though, too, yeah, you know, because yeah, you're bringing relevant. in new perspectives from across the ocean. I know. And, <laughs> and, and that's, that's different. You know, it's, it's country music. Yeah and Americana all come down to, it's a, it's a lot of emotion. You're talking about yeah, how you're feeling about stories. things and real yeah. life stories, which mm -hmm. happen, you know, to people, basically we all have across the world. Everybody has based the same basic, same life stories, right? Yeah. We're yeah. trouble growing Wrapping up, down. trying to yeah. figure <laughs> out who we are, trouble finding love, you know, totally. trying to make sure that we're getting on in life, you know, trouble yeah. with, boss and, and like yeah, having to wake up and go to work to be and stuff. a good person <laughs> yeah, exactly you know but bringing that different perspective from a new zealand side that keeps the the genre fresh so people should embrace that should embrace that new yeah no well i hope so everyone's been really kind so far so yeah it's been good <laughs> okay i'm gonna do the math jamie let mm -hmm. me just do the math here because I'm counting one, two, three, seven, nine. How many albums do you have out at this point? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I think I've got five. Um, there was one I put out with my sister that I don't know if I count. So five or six out there, um, spanning from I think my first release was in 2012, and the latest record came out in 2022. So, but to a range of um, sounds and subject matter there. <laughs> Oh, how did how did COVID impact your songwriting? Um, did you go more was, positive or more negative? I I have to say, and I I hate to say it, but I probably kind of went more inward in a negative way because you've sort of you know I moved to North America before the pandemic was a thing, and the aim there was to kind of yeah meet people, make some moves, play some shows, and I suppose expand my career into North America. 
Um, and of course, with the pandemic, that sort of forced me and my husband into to heading back home to New Zealand and kind of what felt like settling a little bit before we were ready. Um, and obviously, you know, same story for everyone. Financially, it was really difficult. So I kind of got myself into a, a nine to five and a test job and it was all feeling a lot like, wow, this has really put quite a pause on what it is I was trying to do. So I got, hey, I got to pay the rent out of it. And, and get you've the got food to do what stuff. you've got to do. <laughs> exactly. And like I say, I mean, I'm sure it's the same story for many musicians. Everyone had to kind of redirect, but I'm not going to lie. It was hard. It was hard on the mind at the time. Yeah. No, I, I get it. But we appreciate as fans, as music fans, we appreciate the fact that small artists like you stuck through it. You know, because yeah. so many people in a lot of different industries, not just music, but so many people got to a point where they just they couldn't do it anymore because it totally. became financially impossible to to keep going. And so yeah, more yeah. power to you. Thank you for bringing us new music. Thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. And that's been something that's, I think, really important to me is I think the life of a musician the, the narrative is is that you have to kind of suffer to live out your dreams and I just I don't want to see it that way because I don't think it's sustainable so yeah there's times in life where you might have to settle into a job and save up for another record or whatever it is and that's just all part of it and kind of adds to the story I think so oh when you do have to to take a little time <laughs> off or or you're you know you're 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 juggling a couple things what else do you do Great, <laughs> great question. So at the moment, I work um, in a company that um, grows and exports kiwi fruit. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm working in marketing, um, which I actually have never done before. I was trained in graphic design, so I suppose it kind of crosses oh. over. But yeah. If you ever need marketing or promotional help, hey, just give me a call. <laughs> I mean, ha I literally, I'd be happy to help. I've been doing it for 25 years. So yeah, just well, give me no, a call. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's all new to me, especially marketing a fruit. <laughs> yes, yes, that is, it's a little bit more difficult. What I will tell you is be cheeky and fun and make yeah. fun of yourself because that's going to be, that's going to draw, draw people in. Totally. And it's a wonderful space. I think it, it coincides with music quite well because you're learning about people and their behaviors. And, you know, it, it's exciting to me. I work with a great team in a really small town in New Zealand. Um, but no, I, I feel grateful to do it. And hey, they let me, you know, do these trips over to the US and play a few shows and they're super relaxed about it. So, yeah, that's awesome. Hey, as long as you can get your stuff done by 10 p.m. in the, uh, uh, yeah. the day, you know, it's like, wait, you can go to America all you want. But, you know, you got to work remotely when you do that. Uh, yeah, no, I yeah, totally exactly. get that. And no, that's it it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing that you found a company that is going to, you know, support yeah. your dream. Not everyone gets that. Yeah. No, and I, I think when I was, look, I actually spent a good six months trying to find work. And I think the musician thing threw people off a little because they were worried that, you know, you might drop everything to go and do something else. But I just have to say, like, I think musicians probably similar to athletes, not that I would compare myself to an athlete, but um, have, have a real drive to make things happen and are people, you know, people people so i think yeah just a note to i suppose employers out there don't discount musos <laughs> from right, being exactly. good employees yeah and, and no and and comparing yourself to an athlete is very apropos because there's not a whole lot of professions in the world nowadays that have to be on the road for yeah you know 50 to 75 percent of their time that's yeah, hard yeah. traveling and playing and just just not performing well your own bed is hard yeah and actually the other night um we had a show in chicago and i felt i felt like i didn't perform very well and it was just that same thing of going you know you just need to get over it and look to the next show or the next game or whatever it's going to be so i think there's a lot of yeah a lot of the same mindset there <laughs> stick new it that stick to itiveness Mm, exactly yeah yeah well jamie uh you know okay so five albums you've made now are you per 
performing music here? Are you singing? Are you how involved are you in the production of it? Do you find yourself like a gearhead when it comes to making it? Or do you find <laughs> joy in performing? What's tell me about the process? Yeah, I mean my I suppose where I get most excited is the writing, is the writing and, and the initial creation of a song. Um, and then when it comes to recording, what I've always, I think, really been looking for and why I'm so drawn to the country and folk and Americana genre is just the authenticity around the process. So I think um, I found myself a producer and manager called Nash Chambers, and we're both on the same page and not overthinking things or overproducing music and um, we keep the sessions really relaxed in, in the way of recording so usually just a big open room with you know the whole band inside not too much tuning on the vocal just kind of keep it really live feeling um, almost and I think I think what we especially I would say do well is just celebrate the imperfections so we're Definitely, I'm the same with songwriting as I am with recording. Not actually one to go back and tweak and tinker too much. Kind of just enjoy the beauty of whatever it is that's happened at the time. Unless it's really bad, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a bow tie. You know, a bow tie isn't supposed to be symmetrical. It's supposed to be a little bit off, you know? Sometimes yeah, and exactly. in Americana and country especially, it's like having a little twang here and there actually like adds a little feel to the song. Totally. And I mean, I think the songs are about often for me, you know, struggles, uncomfortable situations in life, you know, and it makes sense that when we go to produce and record the record that that's reflected. Um, so that does also make for a really fun experience and that you're kind of not nitpicking and trying to perfect right. everything. It, um, it reminds yeah. me of uh, Ray LaMontagne's first couple albums. They were really raw, but you felt the emotion yeah. in those songs because of that. Absolutely. And I think, you know, sometimes that's hard for me when, um, of course, when I write a song, often I'll just record a demo on my phone. And I would say nine times out of 10, that will forever be my favorite vocal. Um, and unfortunately, it's not, we can't usually use it because right. it's a little too rough. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little lo-fi. Um, but you know, that's that moment in which I've written the song and performed it right then and there. That's obviously when you kind of get the most authentic, genuine vocal. So I'm always just chasing that. Okay, Jamie. So, okay. So how long were you in New Zealand before you get, came over here to the, uh, to Canada? How many years? Um, well, I've lived in New Zealand for most of my life. I mean, like, um, as as a performer, like, as, as sitting a there performer. grinding, yes. Right, okay, we're back for about a year and a half. Um, yeah, so it was, a, it was a big kind of gap and a big stint before being able to come back over. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the very beginnings of your evolution as a singer-songwriter. Like, you were in New Zealand for a while, and then you moved to Canada. So, I'm okay, wondering... Yeah, yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> I I suppose I started off in the New Zealand uh, music industry when I was about 15, 16. So I was there for a good decade before I decided to make the move over. Um, and I, to be honest, I had a kind of reasonably successful career back home. So it was easy to sort of maintain things and kind of keep doing what I was doing. I, it was the old label story, you know, <laughs> Cause they kind of kept shopping me around and, and tried to expand things until I'd sort of had enough of, of being pushed into writing a style of music that I wasn't really excited about. So that's what kind of broke it all down for me and, and just made me decide to get out. Yeah. What, what were they trying to push you toward? Like more poppy stuff? Well, I think it's, it's not their fault, but I think, yeah, exactly. Everyone's looking for something commercial and relatable. Um, and I think for me, that's just that's just not really how I work. Um, hey, I might come out with a few songs that are incredibly kind of, um, yeah, pop or structured or um, relatable, well, yeah, well, sure. but it kind of doesn't come from trying, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, and that, no, it totally makes sense because, and 
And I really dislike when people just say, oh, she's just a country artist or, oh, they're just a punk band. And it's like, no, you know, they're musicians. They yeah. play a lot of punk or they play a lot of country, but it doesn't mean that like that's all they do and that's all they can do. You know, like yeah. Beastie Boys, sure. They were like, you know, the, the, the forefront of rock rap, but they have a whole punk album. They have like Absolutely. a whole uh, acoustic album. It's like people, artists are artists. They do different things. They might just do w one more than the other. That's all. Totally. And it is kind of amazing to me, I think, as well, that we're still, you know, I know genres kind of have to exist to a point, but I suppose that's where the Americana genre is really interesting to me because it just sort of feels like a lot of outcasts or like music that you don't really know what to describe it as. It's got like traditional country instruments, but it's not necessarily, you know, straight down the middle. So there's yeah, a lot of, a, there's a lot of blues in there. There's a lot yeah. more rock in there. You know, totally. you got, I think Americana has a lot of space to maneuver. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, even within America, like you can go from like, um, you know, a more of a rock song to more of like a twangy old 60s style country song. And it's totally. all the same, you know? It's, it's kind of like you can sort of do whatever you want. <laughs> There's not, there, you know? well, there aren't gatekeepers in Americana, you know? It's no. like, there are a lot of like, no oh, that's not punk yeah. rock. That's yeah. not R&B, you know? It's like, oh, oh, this new Bruno Mars album, that's not, that's not soul you know, it's like, yeah. what? you don't need gatekeepers. It's just, it's good music. Yeah, yeah. It's real. It's storytelling. 100%. Yeah, does, it make you, does it make you feel something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Speaking of storytelling, Jamie, okay, so let's talk about your latest album. So that just came out. I'm sure it was, what, 2019 it came out? What? They actually, the most recent record came out in 2022. So oh, yeah. not too long ago, yeah. Yeah, so you that was a self-titled album called um, My Name. A <laughs> <laughs> self-titled album called My Name? That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so um, can you tell us about the writing process of that? I'm sure it's comes, it comes from a certain place. So can you tell us? Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, a lot of those songs came from definitely a few years of sort of transitioning um, into North America and figuring out a little bit more about who I am as as it happens um I actually wrote quite a lot about my family in this record and am pretty vulnerable I think around some of the struggles that my my family and my parents faced um through some of their adventures over the years so it's it's sort of like a really I suppose if you if you haven't heard of me which I assume a lot of people wouldn't have it's a really good picture um of my life and what I'm all about and yeah, what I'm sort of discovering about myself. So, yeah. Uh, no secret diss tracks about your husband or anything like that that we need to worry about? No, um, he's perfect. No. So he's really <laughs> hard to write about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have a question I like to ask every artist because um, I, I have a thing for, for music venues. I, I, I find them to be fascinating, great architecture. And, you know, a lot of times they become like historic places in a city. Mm -hmm. If you could choose any venue in the world to play at, which venue would you choose? Oh, wow. I know That's it's a hard, hard one because there's so many good, good stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this big is big or a, small. Yeah, what? this is probably a bit of a cop out, but I would have to say the Ryman. <laughs> Oh, the Ryman. Oh, yeah, you're, going, yeah. you're going straight old country. Straight to you're going to like get in with Bonnie yeah. Raitt and stuff like that. Okay, I see. Please let me play it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, honestly, that'd be the ultimate for me. Yeah. It's like, yeah, street. it's like, I haven't actually, Um, you talk about being close to like Memphis and Nashville and, and, and the country mecca of America. I actually haven't been there. I have a lot of catching up to do. Um, yeah. I have to get out there and get to some of those, uh, you know, blues clubs and jazz clubs and country clubs on, is it, oh, is it yeah. Pearl Street there that I need to go to Well, uh, in Nashville? Which, which is the big street in Nashville? Where, yeah, where there's, the... there's Broadway, um, but I don't know that 
the <laughs> authentic uh, Americana artists here would, would probably recommend that. But there's a whole lot of really interesting little venues around East Nashville as well. Um, okay. I played at the Station Inn in the Gulch, which was Ooh, really cool. Oh, the Gulch. Cool. That, sounds, that sounds fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, look, I'm not a Nashville expert, but um, there are some incredible, beautiful old venues here with a lot of history. So absolutely have a yeah, look I'm, around. I got I got to get down there. So, OK, so the <laughs> Ryman, we'll see you playing there in a couple of years, which is great. I'll be yep, out there for that yep. show. That, how's that? Okay. <laughs> well, maybe someone's listening. Maybe it's a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie, you're on tour right now. Let's talk about the current tour because you've got a couple of dates coming up. Is that right? In June? Or well, did I miss them? I just missed them, didn't I? Shut oh, You just missed them. I'm so sorry. Yeah, they've just been. <laughs> How'd they go? Tell us about Chicago. Yeah, they went really well. Uh, people were really receptive. Um, the Old Town School of Folk is also a really, really amazing little venue. Um, the Moccasin Creek Festival we played in Effingham was so amazing so many great artists um got to meet the guys from american aquarium and um, loved listening to a, an artist called a demon artist and yeah it was just all a great experience everyone was very kind to me so yes unfortunately those shows have passed but um <laughs> i'll try and come back and play some more soon well what's going on now then what is your uh what is the outlook for the rest of the year look like for jamie mcdell yeah, I've got a um, a new Wii EP out called the Beach House EP. Um, so there's a single on there called Beach House, which is actually all about my struggles <laughs> through trying to find a job um, and a couple of other tracks there. So that's out at the moment. We're promoting that. And I'm actually just here in Nashville trying to write a new album. So see how I go. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you'll get it there in Nashville. You're surrounded by artists that are it's just the place to be. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, COVID <laughs> kind of took them out, and they're like, "Who wants to write? Who wants to make music?" Yeah, I know, but it's so awkward because my new thing is that I I just love writing by myself at the moment. <laughs> so I'm kind of in Nashville doing a few sessions, but then looking forward to just sitting in my room and seeing what comes out on my own. So I'm not sure if that's the best way to be, but it's working at the moment. Well, if you, if you need some inspiration, I heard that the Cumberland River Boat Cruise okay. is excellent and will give okay. you lots of inspiration. <laughs> Just do do the sunset one, you know, because you want to see you get you, they, they, they drive you out. I, I've looked a, a lot into all this stuff, but yeah. they, they drive you. They drive you back into Nashville at sunset. And so you're like coming in and all the lights are starting to come on and stuff. It does sound amazing. Oh. It's pretty fun. Look at the videos yeah. of the Cumberland <laughs> River uh, boat cruise. It's it's fantastic. Get some inspiration. That, thank you so much. Yeah, I will do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you get uh, travel advice here on the program. Exactly. Probably. Yeah, music and travel and marketing advice. I, need, I needed need it. it. <laughs> okay, so let's play. Let's play your latest song, Beach House. Okay, Amazing. I want to know about it. I want to know like. It's a, it's a song good enough to make the whole album about. So tell us about this song, Beach House. Yeah, so I I was literally um, just, I'll be honest, probably a little depressed with having gone to a bunch of job interviews and just not really being able to secure anything. Um, but my husband had built this beach house in this beautiful part of New Zealand. So I kind of said, look, I'm just going to take off for a few days and see if, I'm not doing anything else, but maybe at least I'll be able to write a few songs and kind of chill out a bit. Um, so headed over there and just kind of spent a few days reflecting. <laughs> and actually the song kind of came out because I realized how much of a privilege it was that I was feeling a little, you know, down, but that I could go and find sanctuary somewhere so beautiful and safe and kind of spend some time with myself without being able to, you know, without having to worry about it have a few glasses of wine. <laughs> um, so the song's a mix of, I suppose, my journey through feeling feeling a little sad, feeling a little bit of self-doubt, but then by the end. I love it. Okay, so we'll play Beach it's House. Cool. but I, It's I all have... fine. You're going to be fine. Oh, I, you cut out for a second, but I think I, I got gotcha. you. 
Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I mean, you're in Nashville. We're in California. It's a little far. And the internet is weird. <laughs> it's doing its um, best. <laughs> okay. So I have one more question for you, Jamie McDell. Thank you for coming on the program today. Thank you guys so much. And this one is a doozy of a question. I don't know if you've ever been I'm asked scared. this before. Be, be prepared. Oh, you should be scared. This is a scary question. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, would you rather get into a battle to the death with one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? A battle to the death. Um, the, the, the horse-sized duck, I feel like Are you it would sure? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it would be swift. I don't want to be like, kind of <laughs> but met by heaps of tiny horses and slowly perish so i'll go with the oh, first one <laughs> i can actually see that they like gallop towards you and overtake yeah, you yeah. and then you end up and on their slow. backs and they just gallop away with you exactly yeah <laughs> so you're just gonna sacrifice it all and say well i'm gonna i'm gonna be a goner anyway i might as well get it and imagine the publicity <laughs> your songs your songs would just explode exactly <laughs> i think Someone that's the right enjoy it i think that's the right answer joe is that right that's right i think she's got it all right jamie Mikkel, thank you so much for coming on today thanks jamie thank you guys for the questions appreciate it Feel proud and brave for living through today. 